In the last section, we successfully created a new component, search bar, exported it, and then rendered it inside of our app. In this section, we're going to start to explore creating a component not with a function, but with an ES6 class. So check out our search bar right now. Right now, it's a plain JavaScript function. Some information goes in, you know, maybe we've got some arguments in here in the future, and the only thing that comes out is some JSX. And that JSX is what eventually ends up being rendered to the DOM. This is a React component that we call a functional component. It's called a functional component because it literally is a function. One function, some info goes in, some JSX comes out. That's it. Very simple. There's another type of component in React, which is called a class component. A class component is used whenever we want a component to have some type of internal record keeping, some ability for it to be like aware of itself and what's happened to it since it's been rendered. Because users are going to be typing into this input, or, you know, this, this component, this input right here, our component really needs to have some ability to introspect itself, some ability to, to tell other parts of the application stuff like, hey, the user just typed something into my input here, and here's exactly what they typed. You know, it needs the ability to be a little bit more aware. So to upgrade this component from a functional component to a component with some, you know, more intelligence to it, some greater complexity, we're going to create what's called a class-based component. And we're going to create it using an ES6 class. An ES6 class is not like a CSS class at all, totally different. It's an actual JavaScript object with properties and methods to it. So let's go ahead and do the refactoring uh, from a functional component to a class-based component, and then we'll talk about what some of the differences are. So to start, let's go ahead and delete everything we've got right here. And we're going to start by declaring a new class, a JavaScript class, by writing class search bar, and then curly braces like so. So this declares a new class with name search bar. This class is really just a plain JavaScript object of sorts, no you know, special behavior to it. We could declare a new instance of the class by writing something like new search bar. Okay. We're going to enhance this thing's behavior by extending it with the React base component class. And you know, again, just bear with me for a second here. After class search bar, we're going to do another space and then write extends react.component, like so. So this can be read as define a new class called search bar and give it access to all of the functionality that react.component has. In other words, it gives our search bar a bunch of functionality from the react.component class. When we use a class-based method, we still have to give it the ability to render itself somehow, you know, to return some JSX. To do so, we'll define a method on the class called the render method. Every React component that we create that's class-based must have a defined render method. So we'll define it by writing method, or excuse me, render, then parentheses, a space, and then curly braces. This is, the, this is the syntax that we use for defining methods on a class. Notice that it looks different from a normal JavaScript object. You know, we don't have a colon after render, for example. It might not look like, you know, that it's a function here because we don't have that colon. You know, we don't have something that looks like colon function. But trust me, this is still a function. It's still a method here. So now, whenever our app component tries to render search bar, Instead of just calling a normal function, you know, which it was before, it's going to try, it's going to call this render function instead. So whenever we define a render function, and every class must have a render function, we must return some JSX. Otherwise, we'll end up with an error. So let's go ahead and make sure we follow that rule by adding some JSX that will return from this render method. We'll write return input like so. All right, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save it and give it a run in the browser. And we still get our input on the screen. Cool. Okay. 
Two more things I'm going to talk about here. First, we can clean up some of the code in here by using a little bit more ES6 syntax. So let's do that first. Right now, we have class search bar extends react.component. We can clean up this reference right here by using a little bit of ES6 syntax. Instead of writing react.component, if we go back up to our import statement at the top, where we have import react, we'll add a comma and then curly braces component. Then we'll drop the react dot from component right here. So this is just you know syntax syntactic sugar. This is the exact same thing as doing something like const component equals react dot component. The curly braces here just means import react and pull off the property component as a variable called component, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this, there we go. Okay, so that was the first thing I wanna talk about. Now the second thing I wanna talk about here is just reiterate what's going on with the class here. Previously, our search bar was a functional component. It was really just a you know what we would refer to as kind of a dumb component. It was just a function that we could call and it would return some plain JSX. It didn't have like any ability to really be aware of its surroundings, aware of its state, you know, or have the ability to communicate with other components very effectively. Because we want this component to be able to communicate with you know, other components that we're going to be creating, to say you know, essentially something like, hey, the user just typed in here and here's what they just typed, we decided to promote the search bar from a functional component to a class-based component. When we write a class-based component, we write class, the name of the component, and then we extend react.component. And that basically gives this class a bunch of added functionality. Whenever we create a class component, we must always define a render method and return some JSX. Otherwise, you'll end up with an error. To render a class-based component, total same practice as a functional-based component. No difference whatsoever. So we're still going to just export search bar, and we still, over here in index.js, we just write search bar inside of some JSX tags, and we're good to go. So deciding when to use a class-based component versus a functional-based component tends to be you know, kind of a little bit challenging. In general, I really recommend you start off with a functional component, and only when you decide that you need like added functionality should you start to refactor it to a class. As we go through the rest of this application, I'll definitely point out where it's appropriate to use a functional versus a class-based component. So you know, don't sweat that part. We'll definitely talk about uh, when to you know, use one versus the other. Okay, so now that our refactor is done and everything still looks good over here in the browser, let's continue on to the next section.